distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering the differences between benign, malignant, and dysplasia. This is the fifth video in my series covering cell injury and cancer. Specifically, I want to point out the first video in this section that covers cell stress and adaption, things like hyperplasia and dysplasia, because if you don't understand some of those concepts, this video is going to be pretty tough to understand. So you may want to watch that video on cell stress before you watch this one. Generally speaking, cancer is going to be when cells grow, divide, and differentiate in an unregulated fashion. This cancerous tissue grows faster than the surrounding normal tissue, and this usually results in some sort of mass forming. The pathway that develops cancer has many genetic and or epigenetic changes. Cancers usually start as a single mutated cell. This cell then proliferates and results in an early mass of identical cells called a clonal population. However, over time, additional mutations occur due to genomic instability. This leads to a heterogeneous group of cells within the mass that have different abilities. So some cells will have things, abilities like invasion and metastasis. This is why most cancers take decades to form. A single mutation is usually not enough to cause a metastatic cancer. You need a bunch of different mutations to get to the eventual malignant cancer. Here is a nice picture that depicts the different stages of cancer. As we've already covered in an earlier video, hyperplasia is normal cellular response to increased stress, which results in an increased number of cells. So you can see here that tissue undergoing hyperplasia looks very similar to normal tissue. There's just more cells than normal. Metaplasia is a normal cellular response to abnormal circumstances where the cell is presented with a type of stress it is not currently equipped to handle, which causes the tissue to change the type of cell present, such as in Barrett's esophagus. Severe or prolonged hyperplasia or metaplasia can become dysplasia. Dysplasia is an abnormal change in the cell's characteristics often resulting in the presence of cells in a more immature state than normal. It is usually accompanied by a loss of normal cell orientation, shape, and size. Eventually, we'll end up with cancer, where the cells really don't look like normal tissue at all. Here's a simplified flowchart or pathway for how cancers develop that I've made for you. So the first thing you want to look at is we've got the green boxes and the orange boxes. So orange boxes here are cancer and green boxes are not cancer. And of course the big difference between cancer and non-cancer is that cancer is irreversible. Whatever changes happen to a cancerous cell cannot be undone if whatever cause for that cancer is removed. However, something like hyperplasia is reversible. So if you put excess stress on a tissue, the number of cells will increase. But if you decrease that level of stress back to normal, then the number of cells will decrease back to normal as well. So it's reversible. So these green boxes are reversible changes and the orange boxes are irreversible cancer. So we'll start here at the top left. You can have prolonged hyperplasia or metaplasia leads to dysplasia. And also there are certain pathways where types of cellular damage can cause dysplasia as well. And here we're talking about a low grade dysplasia, which is precancerous and has very low risk for causing disease or death. Again, these low-grade dysplasias are, for the most part, reversible. That's why they're green. Now, these low-grade dysplasias, if they're not identified and addressed quickly, can go on to become cancers. And there's two different sorts of pathways. There's benign and malignant. 
And the big difference between them is metastatic potential. Benign cancers will not metastasize, and malignant cancers can have the ability to metastasize. They will not always spread, but these types of cancers have the ability to spread. Benign cancers do not become malignant cancers. They're usually different pathways. And obviously, benign cancers generally have a better prognosis than malignant cancers. Pathway to become a malignant cancer is going to have an intermediate step with high-grade dysplasia. High-grade dysplasia is a type of cancer, but it's an earlier form of cancer. And it is pre-malignant. So it is cancer, but it's pre-malignant and it's isolated within the basement membrane, so it hasn't started local invasion or spread yet. But again, if that's not identified and addressed, this high-grade dysplasia will go on to become a malignant cancer, which is a later stage cancer that has the capability to be invasive locally and sort of globally spreading throughout the body. These malignant cancers generally have carcinoma or sarcoma in the name. Now we can talk about the difference between benign and malignant cancers a little bit more. Generally speaking, malignant cancers are really bad and benign cancers aren't so bad. There's a big difference in prognosis between the two. <clears throat> and the key difference between these two different groups is the ability to metastasize. Malignant cells have the ability to invade tissue and metastasize or spread to other sites, while benign tumors do not have this ability. And again, benign cancers for the most part do not become malignant. They're separate pathways, most often caused by different types of mutations and epigenetic changes. Benign and malignant cancers look very different when viewed using a microscope. Benign tumors look very much like normal tissue that it was derived from, while malignant cancers look very different than normal tissue and are easily identifiable from the surrounding tissue. This is because there's more genetic and epigenetic abnormalities in malignant cells, so they look less and less like normal tissue as you're adding all these additional mutations. The malignant cells no longer look like the mature cells in the surrounding tissue. Through various mutations and epigenetic changes, these malignant cells have become more primitive and have a greater variety of characteristics. These malignant cells are described as being poorly differentiated. Another similar term for that would be anaplastic. And here's a table outlining the difference between malignant and benign. They're both unregulated cell growth. They're both irreversible. Malignant can metastasize, benign can't. Malignant is poorly differentiated, while benign is well differentiated. The speed of growth for malignant tumors tends to be fast, and the speed of growth for benign tumors tends to be slow or non-existent. Malignant tumors often recur even if they've been removed, while benign tumors rarely reoccur after being surgically removed. Malignant cancers can often cause death, while benign cancers rarely cause death. And here's another table diving a little bit more into detail about the microscopic differences between the two. So benign cancers and normal tissue have a regular organized pattern of cell shape and arrangement. Neighboring cells tend to look very similar. They've got normal sized nuclei, and very little mitosis going on. Malignant cancers have a regular unorganized cell shape and arrangement, so it just looks disorganized. Neighboring cells can look very different. Some cells very close to each other could have different mutations and therefore appear very different. They tend to have bigger nuclei and lots of mitosis because they're splitting and dividing very quickly and rapidly and they tend to be hyperchromic or darker color than normal tissue. Here is a picture of malignant tissue. You can tell they're hyperchromic. They've got 
sort of a disorganized pattern. It's not sort of nice organized. You see what looks like mitosis in a couple places. Neighboring cells can look very different. It just looks kind of nasty. Here's another example of a malignant cancer. You've got different cells look pretty different. Neighboring cells, you've got darker cells, pretty disorganized. Here's one example of a, what a malignant cancer will look like from a gross specimen. You can see it's kind of a nasty looking, gnarly looking shape. It's not very regular or organized. It's not really circular. Sometimes there can be some big ulcers. And then here is what benign cancers more look like. It tends to be more of a round shape with a, with a uniform appearance. It looks like a mass made up of very similar cells. That brings us to the end of this video. If you find any mistakes or typos, please comment at the bottom of the page so I can fix it. I'm hardly an expert on any of the topics I cover. I'm just a regular med student like you, trying to help out some of my fellow colleagues, so there are bound to be some corrections that need to be made.